Hello there, good evening everybody. Uh, firstly, thank you for um, hopefully <laughs> remembering that it's uh, an evening one tonight rather than an afternoon one. Uh, Leslie and I have actually been out for the weekend on a residential doing some Japanese hand stitching. So uh, we got back and in, uh, in time to get this done. But being that last week we didn't do a block, we obviously did two the week before. I thought before we start tonight, it's just nice to do a quick recap so we can just remember where it is we are. Seems ages ago since we last met, didn't we? So hello everybody, hi there. It's lovely to have you with me. So this is where it all started with set one minis and we obviously we did the flower, the star, the cross, although some of you didn't do the cross, but it doesn't matter. And the dragonfly, that was our set once. And then we moved on, we did uh, the bee, so that I like that. <laughs> the bee, the hummingbird, we've done the fan. And we did the, the leaf, or the feather, that was our set two. That's eight blocks, that's eight weeks. And then of course we're on set three now, we've done this one. Although again, some of you might have done the light bulb version of this. We've done this one. So it's just these two now to do and then that's 12 blocks done can you believe how quick it's gone and i still think it's really nice just to do one a week because it allows you to fit all your other projects in around this as well so here are the uh, the blocks some are colored some are not so bear with me that's our first one all colored in of course what have we been using here we go i've been using the derwent ink tents because you mix them with a bit of water or a bit of aloe vera gel uh, let them dry, iron them, and then they are washable. So that's uh, a good one to have. So there's our set one, um, the first one, the flower. And the star. So you've got this sort of colour theme going through. A bit of oranges and blues, because that matches the fabric I'm going to be using. There's my cross. And then we moved on to the dragonfly. I'm not saying that these are in order. Oh, I know, Sue. We were at the NEC last week, so it was it would have been a bit well, unreasonable. We couldn't do it, so that's why I tried to do two the week before. But it is nice to do. This is set two, by the way. It is nice to do this each week. And, of course, it won't be long before I'm going to have to rope John in to help me with the video in because we need to uh, have a go at sewing this quilt together. So I think I'm going to need a bit more than an, just the overhead camera. So there's our set two. And here, look, this is my set three. So this still needs a little bit of colour on it, but we did that one. And then, uh, oh, hi there, Jane. Hi, Deborah and Sue and Terry and Ruth and Mary. Marie, sorry, Marion. No, Marion. And everybody else, it's lovely to have you with me. There's my light bulb, so that's going to be sort of uh, that way around. So again, it needs a bit of colour, but that's okay. And then, of course, we only have two blank ones left because two blocks. So tonight I thought it'd be nice, we're going to have a go at doing the shell and then next week we can do the, the watch or the clock. Uh, so here we go, first things first, let's move that up a bit. You see I've got my stencils ready. So here's the out, outline or the frame and then of course we've got this, this section here but you don't need, need that, it's more about this piece that's interesting. Uh, oh, so that's a good point. Uh, if I actually just do a check on the instructions and I'll get back to you some next week with that, or if I have a look and I'm, I'll post it through the week so you know, and I just think rather than me say now, I'll put it in writing so you can see exactly what it is you need. And then you, hopefully you'll have it ready for when we need it. So bear with me with that. I'll get, I will get done. It's been a busy couple of weeks, so i um, trying to get everything done. Of course, it's still not ended because I'm still on there. I'll be making next week. So, Terry, that's what I've got, honestly. And uh, and there was a new, there are numerous ways of actually making a quilt. Uh, making the top section straightforward enough, but actually quilting it can be quite tricky with a regular sewing machine. So I'm looking at actually quilting each one of these squares separately and then stitching it together. So it's almost like a, a quilt as you go kind of thing. I just thought that might be easier for you guys if you've not done it before. But if you have done it before, please don't wait for me. You're more than welcome uh, to actually do it any, any way you like. This is your quilt. I'm just going through and giving you some pointers as to what I, I would do. So by all means, okay. So what do I have? I've got a couple of pens. Look, I've got my friction pen. This means if I draw with this, I can iron it away after. 
If you've got one and you're not sure, always do a test run first. Don't just draw and think it's fine. And I've got my regular um, Micron, I'll say Micron pen, my regular Santangle fine liner. It's an 03, but uh, you're perhaps the first to hear it. The good news is we've now actually just had a, a delivery of 02s. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right, are we ready? So I've got my center point and I'm just going to... Now, if you look at this, it's not really even, but that doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it by eye and make sure it's sort of in the middle. And then this one doesn't matter so much if it's a little bit skew, but you want to try and get it even in the middle if you can. And then I'm going to draw inside here. And swallow it around. It's quite a nice, easy one to do this is. And of course, if you want to do this on paper, you can do that too. You don't have to do it on fabric. It would work on both. That's it. Uh, you know, I, as before, I might change a few things up a bit for fabric. I say I've not done much of the, the colouring in black or adding a lot of black ink. But you can do that if you want to. Your choice. And I know um, some of you were at the NEC last week. So it was nice to to meet everyone and you will have seen the, the quilt that Leslie made, the original one, on the stand. So that was it's always nice to look at something close up and see it and see what it's like. Okay, so I've done outside and inside. You see? Yeah, oh Terry, yes, I think we are gonna go with that. I am gonna do a bit of quilting on a block at a time. But I'll go through that with you when we need to. Don't worry about it yet. We just want to focus on drawing these blocks. Oh, yes, Sue, yeah, you were there. It was, it's lovely, isn't it? She's done a real good job with it. She does do sewing well. And I think it's nice as well that there's a black and white version, but we are working on a colour one. So you can choose. You can see both of them and make your decision as to what you want to do with it. I will have those others coloured up by next weekend. So I've drawn in those little slots as well, so I can take that away. And there we are, we've got that lovely little frame. So next little bit then, I'm going to refer to my instructions here. And let's have a look. Uh, it's, there we go, first, first page here. And it says the shell frame. So that's what we're going to do first of all. And again, I don't necessarily, I don't use the words, but they're there if you, if you prefer that. And I've got my numbers around here, so this is what I'm going to follow. Although when it comes to these black marks, I might not colour them in, I might colour them in with pencil later. So there's five steps to it, but then you have alternatives if you want to do something different. Uh, no, Sue, he hasn't put my long arm machine up yet. It's still here in bits. Would you, would you like to see the chaos? Here it is. It's look, it's there in bits still, but we've got wheels so we can get that made up. So I'm actually working on possibly the smallest, uh, rockiest table you've ever seen. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll do it. Okay, so looking at step one, we see we've got this slot in the middle here. And I'm going to go from this point and create these curves. So I've got sort of a triangle. And I'm going to do that in, oh, I've missed a line, look. Let's put that in. There you go. All right. Almost like I've drawn that before. <laughs> okay. So here we go. And I'm going to start from, where do I want to start from? I want to get this shape in here. So there we are. Like that. All right. Now I'm not going to do the other one first. I'm going to do all of those. Let's go in a bit. The same time. Because I just find that it easier that I've got that curve. And you see how it just touches that slot there and then comes up to the line there so it just touches you know it feels like i've been away for ages because we've had the weekend away i only stayed out for a night but just you know when you get home and you just say oh i've not been home in ages so it'd be nice to get in my own bed tonight and we've got a bit of homework <laughs> It's very nice actually. I will post the pictures of what we've done. I've got one finished, one project finished, but the other, I've uh, I've decided to 
challenged myself and I've gone a, a tad more complicated than we we were doing in class so that's uh, that's why I'm not ready without them okay so you see I've got the first part of the triangle shape so then I'm going to come in this side so again it's just going to touch that bottom edge there and it's going to create that triangle let's go this way so whatever's comfortable for you whether it's uh, doing all of them at once doing the triangle each time or you're going back and forth it really doesn't matter as long as you've got that line you see i've gone out i've gone in a bit there doesn't matter doesn't matter oh so it was it was good fun it's uh, very interesting it wasn't too far away either it was in derbyshire which is not far from where i used to live actually so i, I sort of knew the area oh hey grace there we are of course last week we had quite a busy week because we did uh four tiles well i did three leslie did one but with it being our anniversary and then we had a, an extra show so it's all been a bit busy okay so that gives us our little triangle so then looking at number two yeah look, there's number one that's step two shows we've got this curve here so let's have a look at that then now it's coming in and it's going to touch the middle there so i'm going to come in and out and again, if you would rather draw a line and then go round and then come back and do the next one, you can do that. But I think I'm, I'm good with putting those in. I know where I'm headed, so it's a nice little just a, a lid following my fabric round there. You see? <laughs> Bubbles are coming up. See, they've always been there. And the next one this is quite a nice one and it grows quite quickly i think and it's one of those shapes that even if you were just to do the frame and then maybe put a sentiment inside you know if you were doing card making or if you just wanted to add something else in the middle you could they're really nice all right see very quick see how that worked now again, on the, the pattern, it does say colour these in, but I'm not going to do that. I think what I can do is I can come in and add some lines. I know we've done that before. You see, starting in the middle. So I'm changing the shape up or the design up a bit. You could leave it and just colour it in. But I'm uh, choosing to come in and add a few lines in there. Oh, Joe, you brought some fabric. That's brilliant. We need pictures. We need to see what colours you've gone with. Absolutely. It'd be fabulous, I'm sure. I hope I've given you all a little bit of confidence to draw on fabric. That was the intention with this. Because I know some of you out there, you're, you're just purely paper crafters and you're trusting me to give this a go. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, and I, I hope I have. I hope I've given you that confidence for you to have a go. We did have a lady at class today, uh, or yesterday, that has never used a sewing machine before. And she actually got a bag made yesterday, a little drawstring bag. I was so proud of her. She really went for it. It's brilliant. Oh, I'll tell you, that'll be nice. Something Christmassy. Again, I suppose it heads up here. I am actually... Uh, in the prep of creating a new quilt so maybe when you've done this one you think you like this one maybe you want to go and do another one we'll see how that goes shall we okay so i'm going to go a bit bigger because you see this here i'm going to fill them with bubbles a bit further. so uh, ideally you could start in the middle but I, i'm going to gauge it as i go um, I probably think get five in. There we are. And I am because it's a small area. I can come in. I am going to fill that bit in. Going to next. So if you're more comfortable with putting the middle one in first, and then you know you're going to get two either side. You see, I'm going round a couple of times. It, it it sort of just defines the outer edge there. 
okay and um, it does sort of say call this yeah I will I'll go in with that bit as well add that bit in I'm not going to do any more sort of darkness though okay and again whether you're comfortable starting at the top there or you want to go in the middle first and two either side you can do that okay and the thing with this as well even if you think i didn't want to do the quilt but i quite like the idea of doing one of the designs you could do this on cushions you could make a book cover and have one on the front there and you could just have a go at doing the one couldn't you just having a little like a like a little mat table mat or something there we go yeah oh don't forget to fill that bit with ink sandra always miss a bit yeah into that one <laughs> yeah bubbles <laughs> Bubbles are, are brilliant for all sorts of things. It really makes a difference, doesn't it? It's nice to have some in there. Um, just fill that bit in the bottom. And again. So Dobby's still AWOL. He's uh, been out and about. I did get a text from him though, uh, Friday night. And he did say, yeah, I'm okay. I'll be back soon. <laughs> and that was about it. So I don't know what he's been up to, where he is, but he's obviously having a good time. I suppose at least he told me he was all right, so he'll be back. The next one. So again, you know, if you'd rather do the middle and then you can equal, sort of equalise to either side. Down there and there. Again, you see, by getting mind, it just sort of gives it a slightly rounder feel, doesn't it? Oh, I know, Marie. I think, uh, I think we all needed a break from him actually after the NEC. I think certainly Leslie did. I don't think she slept for the two nights she had him swinging off the sort of thing. Oh, so now, um, to be honest. I actually, I've, we've given him a card now and we're giving him an allowance so we can sort of uh, check. You know, there was Go Henry cards that you can put money on and you can check and see what they're buying. He's got one of those. So I know he's got a little bit. Hopefully he'll be about ready to work tomorrow. Yeah. Perhaps he met somebody at the NEC and they've gone on a bit of a recce somewhere. But he does this now and again. I mean, last time he went away, he came back and he got a job at Hogwarts. Doing supply, so. That's for somebody he met in a pub. I uh, know. Okay. So, sort of filling those in. A little bit there. Let's have a look at that. Right, look how that nice, isn't it? Where you've just got that little bit of ink just in the points there. That's kind of nice, I like that. Okay, so let's have a look at this next bit. Let's see where we're at. So we've done this, we've done the triangle. We're not colouring, but we put bubbles and added this in. So what we got going on here? Right, this gives you the two outer edges. And you see in the middle now, we've got these lines. One here, look, one here. And then we've got bubbles in the middle. So that's what that is. Okay, so we've got this one. But now it's showing you two together, but on the middle, we've got this. So on the middle, we've got a couple of lines. So one, it's it's sort of about, I don't know, it's not too far in, but we've got a nice little gap. Like so. All right, let's go a bit bigger. Maybe, Chris, but I'm, I'm sure he'll be back when his money runs out. <laughs> I hope he's not got married. Maybe finding his own place to stay. We don't want another. Got enough with all the gnomes. Okay. I'm going to go round and do this sort of frame first. Now you see I'm actually doing it twice. I'm, I'm ever so gentle with my pen on the fabric. As we know. You don't want to sort of press on. And then. 
just sort of gives me that finish line. So coming down, you see it might have a, that's a you see the difference? It might have a, because it's the fabric and the way that the fabric weave is, you see it just misses a few now and again. So just by going back up, it catches them back in. And it's not that there's anything wrong with the pen or there's anything wrong with the fabric. It's just going over it nice and gently. Just make sure we catch all of it. I know, Terry, it'll be funny. We don't, we don't want that. That would be a nightmare, actually. It wouldn't be funny. It would be a nightmare. And then into this one. You see, it just picks up anything that we've missed on the way up or on the way down. <laughs> I knew what you meant. And there we are. So, just sort of forming another shape, really. Been a long day and of course the clocks have changed today haven't they as well so you were you were thinking you were getting up at seven o'clock this morning no you weren't not really <laughs> into this one i can't wait to see what this is going to look like it's going to go it's going to be fabulous isn't it this is made up we're going to be proudly showing them off i'm sure so we're going to have them uh, in the living room on the sofa. You're going to have them in the bedroom. Where you? I think I'm going to put mine. I don't know. I was going to put mine in the car because the fabric I'm using matches a bag I've got and matches my little mug travel essentials that I've got as well. So it's all all matches. So that was my intention. Okay. So looking at this space here now, you know the ones where I'm going to work here rather than at the top because I can get that first. It's sort of nice looking egg shape isn't it I'll give it around a few times let's make sure it's an egg shape and I'm going to do the same on each one purely because you know when you've got the size and I've got that in my my head now my pen's sort of doing the same thing so I think if I get that first one in it's going to make the difference of Having something that looks similar around the sides. Doesn't matter if not. But again, you just be light on your pen. Don't worry too much about pressing on or anything. Let the pen do the work. And if you've got to go around it a couple of times, it's fine. And again, working it around. And another. I think this also helps you to remember which sections you're drawing in. If you've got a little oval in the bottom of it there, you know where you're going. It's a bit easier then. And that one. And then that one along to the next. And then the next. See just how that sort of works in so let's have a look at that okay so we've got those in so the next one I'll go back in again you're going to do is, is have it so it's almost working its way underneath and then this one underneath and then underneath and the next one so they're not touch, touching side by side anymore. They're sort of, it's like an underlap or an overlap. Let me go with those. Next one. And the next. And again, now I'm sort of gauging the space. I'm going to aim for getting four in each one. If I can, if it's different to worry. Maybe you've gone under it a little bit more than me. But just keep it consistent if you can. And again, just ever so gentle with that pen. Just let it do the work as it works over the fabric. I know it's not as smooth as working on paper, but it's a different feel. But you get used to it. 
also get used to drawing these shapes, these little curves as you work your way around. And then the next one, here we go. And then this one. See that sort of forms these little shapes, almost like pebbles. And again, if you didn't want to do pebbles, you could always do stripes. I'll have like, you know, stripes and fill each one in. You could have done lines, we could do wavy lines, you could do zigzags. And so many possibilities. It's whatever you feel like at the time. And if you wanted to, you weren't sure, you could always come in with that friction pen first. And draw it in so you're happy with it. Don't iron it though <laughs> till you've drawn it again. And take your time with it. Next one then. Might be sneeze. Oh. oh, bless me. That, that came on quickly. I don't know why that was happened. It was sneaked up on me, that did. There's another one. It doesn't take long really, does it? It's nice to have, well, be in the moment. Yeah, just enjoy it. Okay. Then one more. And there's another. And then section the space off. And in we go. Let's have a look at that. we go okay it's nice isn't it so let's have a look so our last step so that's where we are at the minute our last step look we've got these little lines it sort of looks depends on how wide your sort of space is it looks like there's four either side and of course there look it's actually filled in around the bubbles so again that's a choice thing i think being that i've done that bit i can do that i think actually what i will do i'm going to bring in my 05 Oh, I've got that one. And a second. We go. See, look, look, look. Oh, two. Look at that. I'm not going to use that though for filling in. Okay. Oh, Sue, I know you've uh, you've spoke with Leslie, haven't you, about um, doing your bag? Is it your buttonholes? She said that uh, you were asking about. I actually took my bag away with me this weekend. So. And, uh, I've been using it. Well, I use it actually. Put all my bits and pieces in. It's a nice little bag. And if you like it and you want to go a bit bigger, you can extend it. So. I can look forward to seeing that, Sue. Okay. So you see, I'm not seriously colouring. I'm just sort of applying the ink. Just making a bit of a difference. My instructions have just disappeared, flown away. You see, we're using that thicker nib, how much quicker it is. And I'm not really having to sort of go over a couple of times. Uh, Marie, I will be selling the O2 pens. They literally arrived on Friday afternoon. So I just need to check them to make sure everything's okay because we, we always do that. And then they will be on the show on Thursday. All being well, of course. Oh, Chris, yeah, the original, no, we're talking about the original bag. You know, the one that's got the little buttons either side, not the one with the mug in it, the actual original bag design. It's got the front pocket. Yeah. Well, the essentials one with the mug, I actually do take it to Hobby Maker with me because it puts my mug in and I've got all my tea bags and tiles. So when I actually do stop to charge the car, I've got everything on the seat that I need. Although I must admit, I, I don't leave the cup in. If the cup's full, I don't leave the cup in the bag just in case the bag falls over. You never know. So my cup goes in the cup holder, 
but when it's empty and I'm taking it into wherever with me it sits in my bag and away I go so again sticking with that 05 I'm coming in and doing this first I'll do those lines afterwards one job at a time Oh, Chris, good idea, yeah, putting your little sewing projects in. Mine's just the right size because I, I'm i not one for carrying a bag. So the original, which is a, a bag, it, it holds my keys, my phone, my purse, and a little bit of hand gel. And, uh, that, you know, and I know if I pick my bag up, I know I've got everything in it I need, really. Maybe a few pens and pencils. There's always a tortillon in a bag. No matter what, there's always a tortillon in it. Okay. There we go. So that's my fill in there. Oh, Jane, I know you've made a few of them, haven't you? Those travel bags. They're, uh, they're really useful. Really good size. Okay. Let's have a look at these lines then. So let me find my instructions. Oh, I thought you was working on a really small table. Oh, here we go. Let's look at them again. Like, so it starts with a long one in the middle. So, okay, let's just zoom there a bit. There we are. Now I think, well, am I going to get four? One, two. I'm just going to go with three. One, two, three. I might actually just change my pen. It might be that my pen, I was... At its moment, I've got another three. So again, you notice that I'm working. Oh, that's a little bit better. I think my pen was dying off a bit. So that's better. I can just do one at a time now. Okay, so I'm I'm just getting three in. I'm still being gentle. I'm still stroking that fabric. You can see there, look, I've missed a bit. Go back. Follow the shape. Just gently and gradually work your way along. And uh, each one's getting a little bit shorter. Oh, Chris, you need to, yeah. We've, uh, well, I've in the process of making a Japanese one from the course today. So when I've done it, I'll post a picture and see what you think. We've done a, I said we've done a drawstring bag and we've done this, this other Japanese type one. Yeah. Quite nice actually, it's been nice to get away. Oh, I can see what I've done there, I've got a long, short, long there, but that's okay. So I'm going to do the same this side. Yeah, that's going to be my slightly variation. But I'm not worried, I'm going to leave it as is. Oh, Chris, your bags are fine. You have no, be fine. No problem. Do things fall out of it? No. Therefore, it's a bag and it's fine. <laughs> I think we're all very self-critical, aren't we? And we all want things perfect, but... See, like this, it's not perfect. But actually, it just gives it a bit of interest. Nobody's going to notice that. Once it's uh, done, see, I've got some longer, some shorter, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do similar on the uh, inside now. Just a little bit smaller, maybe. Okay. And starting again, smaller as I go around, or maybe not. But it's fine. It's obviously it wanted to be that way. Sort of work my way around. Oh, Chris, you should make a bigger one then. And uh, if you want to make one out of the, the pattern that I did, it, if you look at it, it's relatively straightforward for you to make a bigger one. So give it a go. See, I'm not going to worry too much about whether it's all of the same or not, doesn't matter. 
as long as they're all sort of different sizes like that. <laughs> That's true, we can never have too many bags. I actually have a, a satchel that was made by a company, custom made by a company in Liverpool, so it's real leather. And I don't know if you you know the image on the front of Artistic Forms and Frames Book 2, the Tangle Book. There's like a red and black and white sort of cross type design on there. That actually is printed on the front of my leather satchel. Yeah, had it made specially. I think it was an occasion where I'd had a really good few shows. So, yeah, I had did that. Okay, so there we go. There's our frame. Looks like little shirts and ties, doesn't it? Looking at that. So that concludes our frame. So see, then it's sort of saying you could do it this way. You can see now how you've got your triangle and then it's put some lines in. There we've just left it plain. There we've done a slightly different pattern. You can still see though, there's the first curve of the triangle and then we've done, see I've numbered them. One, two, so we've gone around creating those lines. Oh. Right. oh, Chris, yeah, I've got a back pattern, a, a back pack one here. I've got um, another one, the kit part made. All sorts of things I want to go, as you do. Okay, so let's look at this now. Let's look at the uh, little shell. You can choose where it goes, where it sits. It really doesn't matter. You can have it straight. You can have it at an angle. You can have it facing down really doesn't matter and I'm going to go with what is shown in the picture and I'm going to put it straight and I'm going to sort of gauge by eye where it is okay <laughs> shoot entire great minds Marie great minds think alike so let's have a look at the picture here we go so this one's straight up it's got a straight bit there okay so that's what I'm going to go with so first things first I'm going to draw around it with my black pen, but I'm not going to draw the slots in with the black. So we've got a bit of a wave there. Okay. So before we get carried away and put in those slots, let's have a look, see what it's doing. Okay, so you see those slots obviously put this line in. Yeah. So if I put just one either side in just to give me the idea so I'm not drawing around the whole thing just giving myself one either side as a starting point and this is with a pen that irons out okay so then next little bit and again if you want to come in and do this with your iron out pen we need a curve at the bottom here so let's have a look so we've got two points there and then we've got this middle bit so let's put a little mark in that middle bit there let's go in a bit just to give you a little idea okay we'll turn it this way because then what we can do we can create that curve all right you can go even taller if you want or you can draw something from sort of around something but i'm going to go with that bit there okay and then again, sort of find the middle, we're going to have another one sort of here. So that's where we can sort of sketch it a little bit if you need to, because that's going to be ironable. We can get rid of that line. And once you're comfortable with it, you can go ahead and you can draw it in. I'm not going to draw those slots in yet, though. Let's just look at this first shape so then starting in the middle let's put this line in let's put one and split it and split it and then we can split again you see this gives us a little bit more of an even edge and it just helps us to create the shape because we don't want straight lines all the way around we want to create a curve if we can there we go see so i'm going to do it again it's up to you how many times you do it so i might get two in there look you 
Let's see, I'm just sort of work my way around. Whatever works for you. You can put as few or as many in as you like. Uh, Chris, are you asking about this? This is, it's a shell. It could be a fan if you want. But it's a fan. Uh, shell. So we've got that sort of rigid shape. And then we've got the pebbles of the beach and that kind of thing. This bit in the middle, a little loop. And then I'm going to put two loops this side. And three this side. No, I'm not. Two this side. There you go. One, two. So we've got a bit of an even thing going on there. And I think just because I can, that's a bit different to the pattern. I'm going to fill that in. So we've got that little bit going on there. <laughs> so next little bit then, we've got these little lines. If you want to use a straight edge, go ahead and use a straight edge. Because what we're going to do is draw in this line. Let's do this one first. And then this one doesn't have to be exactly the same thickness as the slots, but I'm working with it ish. OK. Oh, Chris, hold your pen a bit further back. If you're holding it here, you can tend to press on a bit. If you want a real fine line, hold it further back. Or maybe <laughs> you need a size two pen. <laughs> OK, see this one? You notice I've turned it because now where that was, it was vertical in line with my body. And then here. It's, again, vertical in line with my body because I find it easier to draw a line that way. It's coming towards me. So whatever's more comfortable for you. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Same with this one. I'm sorry, you asked for that. I had to. I had to. Okay, just take your time with it. There's no, no pressure. Just let it do the work. See, let it do the work. Okay. And the same on this side. So again, I'm sort of vertical with it. There we go. And that one. And then turn it so it's in line. And in line into this one so we've got some sections now split off but we've also got a little bit of shape around it okay so next little bit then and you can sort of let's do the top section first i think you see we've got this line it's like a wave i'm gonna almost mirror or copy it so i've got same wave or something similar don't try and copy it exactly if it's tricky we'll see if you can follow the edge all the way around so i've got that okay i'm turning it this way because it's easier for me to draw if it's easier for you to turn it that way this you can do it that way <laughs> oh chris i'm not sure i just keep going and uh, love what i do and I, I love creating these different designs that you can have a bit of fun with and if i can get somebody drawing who's never drawn before or if you've never sewn before and i can get you having a go at sewing it's brilliant okay don't worry about this if it's a little bit off in terms of the sides it's fine so I have a couple of wavy lines there as well. And I'm going to do a third. Just because I can. Okay. So there we are. We've got that kind of thing going on. So on the bottom here, we're going to repeat what we did here with the bubbles. And I'm going to start with that one there. And then it's going to go underneath each time and again look yeah I've switched to a new pen but i'm still going over and touching ever so gently a couple of times if need be and it's not the pen it's just the fabric and how the pen interacts sometimes it needs that little bit of something 
same with this one and the log you see there so it's quite fine that one isn't it and then oh let's do this middle one so that's going to be really small but we're still going to have the same idea there see coming out and it seems to be as you sort of draw larger or longer lines you get that sort of a thing that you've got to go back over it not, not to worry it's not you okay same here and following it round and again, you'll notice I'm not counting. I'm not trying to get the same amount in each one. It really doesn't matter. Let's see. I'm about just sort of filling that space that you've got there. And here around we go again. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to fill in the gaps. I'm sticking with the finer pen just because the, the gaps are quite small so I don't want to bring my five in and take it over because we can't really hide that at this point. Don't want to be filling them all in with ink so let's do it that way. So we've got no pottery throwdown tonight have we? I don't know what's on the on the TV tonight. What uh, delights await us? It's, uh, couldn't watch any last night. Was a little bit busy doing other things. <laughs> See how it just comes on in. Same this way. And around we go. It doesn't take much, does it? I'm not really filling it. I'm just sort of adding a little bit of ink in. Let's have a look at that. Okay, see now that sort of matches with the frame, doesn't it? So our next little bit, we're not too far off done now. Let's, I'm going to come straight up the middle, part way. And then put a loop on the end. And then I'm going to come up. Create one, two loops, one, and two loops. So quite quite narrow here. I can still do it though, look. So then one loop, and two, one, and two. And again, loop, one, two. You see? Now here it's quite fine, so you've got to make a decision. Are you going to make one of these or are you going to have it so it looks like it's going underneath? So like a half a one. You see? On that end. Oh, hi, Alison. Oh, not a problem. You can catch up. You know what you're doing. <laughs> it's uh, nice to sort of hear you. Well, not hear you, but hear you know what I mean just uh, decorating our shell and loops again put the line in little loops same on this side and there we go a little loop and in and around okay so that's sort of our little shell design. So we've now got, if we have a look at it, we've actually got these little loops around the side in sections. So let's have a little look at this on the instructions. Here we go. There it is. It just gives it a little bit of interest there, doesn't it? So I think I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to put these black sections in. So where do we start? I'm going to start here in this corner. And they're loops that grow. So let's start from a point and create a loop. And then it feels right to sort of do it on the back of that one. So on the back. 
That's another loop. And then instead of putting the thick black sort of space in it, let's just put a little line and a dot or two. Just gives it a bit of interest. And then see here, there's a, there's a gap, so it again feels comfortable to put one in there. And then one in there. And again, I can feel the, the fabric sort of not scratching as such. So that I'm going underneath, but you can feel it resisting a little bit. And let's have one coming up and out here. Now yours is going to flow slightly differently to mine, I'm sure. Uh, when you feel that you want to, we can go and do the other way. But yeah, I can feel it resisting. See, I've missed a bit there. And that's what happens when you sort of taking a pen over. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to put another one there. I'm going to bring one out here. See, I've missed a bit there. It's only when you draw in something a little bit of a longer line. So you can have them all the way around. You can have just a few if you want. So let's bring a little line and a loop out the top there. Another one. Just sort of finishes that edge. So let's on this side. Let's just have the odd one coming out in places just to give it a bit of shape. So this side. Let's sort of pull it out again so you can see it. There you go. See, look how that's worked. And then here, so I'm going to come down this way. Let's do this bit first. So let's go that way. Lines. And again. There you go. Is it, oops, going fine. As I bring it back, I can feel the pen dragging a little bit. So if you slow down and see, just go back over if you need to. Just on that bottom edge coming down again. And you can sort of feel it. There you go. And let's do one here. Let's have a look at that. You see, you've got a nice little selection going there. Again, if you would rather do this with your friction pen first. Go ahead, it's whatever's comfortable for you. And uh, then put them in when you're ready, or you can leave them out completely if you wanted. Where is part of the design? Let's have, let's have one going down there, look. Yeah. And then again, let's have some of those little loops coming out. That's where you think you'd like to have them. They're just really nice, aren't they? I think what I am going to do, being that I've changed my pen part way, I'm going to come back in and go round that frame again. And of course, I could put that stencil back on and draw it, but I'm going to do it freehand, it's fine. Just sort of redefines that edge and makes it gives us that feeling that there is there is a frame there. And you can do that with your coloured pencils afterwards. I'm not going to colour this live tonight. You will want to go and get your glass of wine. I'm going to go get my uh, my tea. John's cooked chicken. So as far as colouring's concerned, it's going to have some shade in these areas, just a colour, a little bit where we've got those, a bit in the bubbles, and then on our little shell, I'm going to be colouring either side, so you've got a little highlight in the middle, but of course you can do whatever you want to do. Have a look at your instructions, and if you look at the front picture, you can see there where it's been shaded, you see where you've got the highlight on the bubbles. And you've got your colours there too. And see where we've actually done coloured pencil or colour darkness on both sides gives it that sense that it's moving in. So I think this one, uh, yes, yeah, so I think this is one that you're going to really enjoy doing. It's going to be a nice addition. And of course, if you've drawn it upside down, you could do it that way. There's no right or wrong way with this. 
whatever works for you it's entirely fine so um, have a bit of fun with it so i will get the others colored and i'll post them and i also i'm going to make a note about sorting out um just giving you a bit of advice on wadding and which to use and how much and then of course next week it's the last of the blocks which is going to be there you go the sort of the watch face i'm not going to go as in, in as much detail as that but uh, it's definitely going to be a watch face and, uh, and then really it's about starting to make each block so what we'll do is make um put the strips on each block separately then we'll do a little bit of quilting on or stitching on top of that to sort of attach this to the, the quilt the, the wadding and then we'll put it all together that's sort of my plan but it could change and I'm, i'll do it as easy and as simply as i can but if you want to do it your own way please feel free i'm just going through and giving you a hand if you've never done it before so yeah i'm looking forward to that christine myself uh, so with that in mind all done and sorted have a lovely evening everybody i uh, will see you um, on tuesday at two o'clock if you're following the tiles we're back to a regular single tile tuesday and then of course it's uh, hobby maker thursday and uh, another tile friday then we're back to sunday goodness me it's got a quick week so have a good one everybody and i'll speak to you all soon so take care and see you later bye